Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Easter. Yep, you heard it right. We're talking about Easter. Because in the year 2022, Easter and the High Holy Day of Unleavened Bread coincide on April the 17th. So, I'm titling this video, April 17th, 2022 is when the decisions will be made. So what I plan to do is come down and show you the significance of this holy day and this holiday falling on the same day. This is a really big deal, guys. But anyway, let's get into it. First verse we're going to look at is over here in Mark chapter 13. This is when our Messiah was explaining to his disciples about the tribulations that were to come and the day of the Lord and all of that. Same as Matthew 24. We're going to see that one later. But in this one, I want to point out verse 24, which says, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So what he's talking about up there, when he's talking about the tribulation, or the tribulation of those days like we hear in the other Gospels, he's talking about Jacob's trouble. This is the trouble that Israel went through starting all the way back when they first took the daily sacrifice. All of that gold and silver that they used to make sacrifices every day. Well, Nebuchadnezzar took that and put it in his treasure house with his gods, making it impossible for them to do the daily sacrifice, which of course was a requirement. So starting on that day when he took those instruments, started Jacob's trouble and then in 686 AD is when they put a cap over the foundation stone. Now, you remember Solomon's temple was also built over that stone, but they had demolished it by then. And then they put an abomination of desolation on top of that rock. Well, when you continue to follow Daniel's prophecy going another 1,335 years, you see that this trouble ended in January the 13th of the year 2022. Now, that should help you to understand all of these strange things that seem to be going on in the world these days. Um, a lot of you guys are asking me, and I don't really pay attention to the world. I pay attention to our Father, and I don't have to worry about what they do out there in the world. But anything you see can be tied to this, because we are in this transition period where Jacob is out of trouble, but yet he is woken up in a unprotected and unclean state. And so the powers that be are actually trying to take advantage of that vulnerable state that we're in right now. But anyway, back over there in Mark, he was talking about the sky being darkened and the sun not giving its light. What he's talking about is the day of the Lord that we read about in Revelation chapter 6. You see right there in verse 12, it says the sun became dark as sackcloth and the moon became as blood. When you read further down, you see that this is actually the wake up call. Now, I've done one video where we talked about how there are actually two earthquakes in the Bible. This one here in Revelation chapter 6 is the beginning of the tribulation. Like I said, it is the wake up call, letting everybody know. Like it says there in verse 17, the great day of his wrath is come. But then there is another earthquake that we hear about over there in Revelation chapter 11, which is at the end of the tribulation after they have killed the two witnesses and such. These are actually two separate earthquakes. So what the Messiah was telling us was that immediately after Jacob's trouble in, we can start to see these events take place. So the question becomes, how soon is immediate? But we're going to see here in a few slides, some verses that make it clear what date he was talking about. But anyway, just as an element of the timeline, you have the end of Jacob's trouble, and then you have the six seal earthquake event. And then you see in Revelation chapter seven that the elect are gathered. So the elect are gathered after the shaking of the earth or after the sun and the moon go dark. Now, when I was in school studying and giving speeches and presentations, the first thing they told me was not to put too many words on the screen because the people would stop listening and they would actually start reading the screen. Well, I'm kind of taking advantage of that, allowing you guys to pause and read these verses as we go. But anyway, the next verses that we want to look at is over here in 2nd Esdras in chapter 2, where it's also talking about this gathering. 
You see here in verse 38, it says that we will be sealed at the feast of the Lord. But when we come back to Revelation chapter 7, it also uses the word sealed. So this sealing and this gathering is the same thing. But now when we look at the Septuagint translation of Jeremiah 31, it talks about the gathering too down there in verse 8. But now it's saying the feast of Passover. It's saying that we are to be gathered during the feast of Passover. This is what the scripture means when it says line up or line, precept or born precept. We have to jump all over the scripture to put this puzzle together. And I understand why it's done that way. Any book that would have given us all of the details we need will actually be down in the Pope's personal library. And none of us would ever hear about or ever get to see that book. But anyway, let's come over here to the general epistle of Barnabas in chapter 8. Because it's also talking about the sealing and the gathering. But this time it's talking in terms of the temple. That third temple that we're all expecting to be built. Look at how it's actually related to Passover there in verse 21. Where it says, having received remission of our sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we are become renewed, being again created as it were from the beginning. Wherefore, God truly dwells in our house that is in us. So you must understand that we receive the remission of our sins through Passover. That communion ceremony that we go through is actually a cleansing of our spirit. See, the way it all works is our father gave us baptism, which gives us forgiveness of all of the sins that we had committed up until that point. But we know that we are sinful individuals and we will get dirty again or get sinful again. And so our father in his infinite wisdom gave us the opportunity every year to partake in the Passover communion where we will drink the wine and eat the bread. And that will actually give us a spiritual bath, making us clean again. And we see here, according to the epistle of Barnabas, this is actually the pathway back to the temple, this feast day of Passover. So that lends importance to the feast day of Passover. So it should be easily understood how we will be gathered at the feast of Passover. Like we talked about, we have been awoken since January the 13th of 2022, but we are awake and we are dirty. We are unclean. Most of us don't know when the Sabbath day is. We're eating foods that are harming us. We are partaking in a lot of things that the world has set up for us to make us unclean. Well, those of us who actually participate in Passover or second Passover, if we miss the first one, will have the opportunity to get back into this clean state, allowing us to become the temples of the Father, allowing him to dwell within us. Now, when we come over here to Ezekiel chapter 34, it's also talking about the gathering. But this time it says in verse 12 that we will be gathered in the cloudy and dark day. Now, I have been paying attention to this word in right here because it doesn't say on that cloudy and dark day, but in that cloudy and dark day, which could lend to the idea that this is talking about more than just one 24 hour period. But you guys let me know what you think in the comment section. Now, one thing that I am sure of is that he's telling us that we will be gathered on that day or in that day when the sun and the moon are darkened. Talking about Revelation chapter 6 and the sixth seal event. But now let's come over to Isaiah chapter 24 because it's also pointing to the great day of the Lord. You see down there in verse 18 where it says the earth do shake. It's talking about the earthquake. But when you come back up to verse 16, it's talking about the treacherous dealers and how they have dealt treacherously. Now, this is actually talking about a holiday, either Christmas or Easter. You see how it's saying that they are singing songs of glory and to his righteousness. So they're singing praises to our father. But what is our father doing? Is he taking pride or taking pleasure in this worship? No, he says, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. So this is a day when people are singing his praises, yet they're acting treacherously. This would be on the holiday Easter where everybody is down at the church singing praises to the father right before they eat the Easter ham and start the Easter egg hunts. 
So one can deduce from these verses here that the shaking, the Revelation 6 event, will take place on an Easter or a Christmas. Now, Easter is the mother of Baal. You ought to understand the world religions want you to think that this has something to do with our Messiah. But you've never heard of our Messiah with a bunny or an egg or anything like that. You couldn't imagine him walking around in pastel colors. This is not to do with him at all. These are talking about the Babylonian religions and the religions of the Zidonians and such. Now, this Easter is actually what got Solomon in trouble. You understand that Solomon didn't do righteous in the eyes of the Lord. He was a wise king, but he made a huge error making sacrifices to the Zidonian gods and such. And that's what actually brought him down when he turned his back on the father and built temples to these gods and made sacrifices to these gods. He lost his power that he received from our father. And in his last days, they actually made a clown and a fool out of him. But he wasn't the only one. When you read throughout scripture, the children of Israel often went towards these false gods. Christmas and Easter has been a snare for the children of Israel all throughout history, well before the Messiah. The only thing now is that the Catholic Church has found a way to link these pagan holidays to the worship of our Messiah and got us thinking that we are down there worshiping our Father when we're actually worshiping their pagan gods. But now the problem in the year 2022 is that their holiday Easter falls on our high holy day of unleavened bread. But we'll get to that in a second. Let me show you right here where it's talking about how often Easter falls during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, we have to understand that their calendar, the Gregorian calendar, was actually created for the date of Easter. It wasn't going to fall on a date that they wanted to. So they changed the entire calendar so that the date of Easter will fall exactly where they wanted it to. And where does it fall? It often falls during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a very big deal, guys, because the main thing about the Feast of Unleavened Bread is getting the leavening out of your house. Now, don't be confused thinking that they're talking about sin or talking about flour or bread. This leavening, like the Messiah told us, is the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the doctrine of the church leaders. And the doctrine of the current church leaders is Christmas and Easter. So what we're being told is not to partake in any type of religion during this whole week. But yet they made sure by changing the entire calendar that Easter would fall smack dab in the middle of unleavened bread almost every year. So those of us who could have normally taken advantage of the holy days simply by being around other people or just being in the spirit during those days would now break out of that communion and actually go down and serve the pagan gods. Now, I did a little bit of research. I tried to do this on my own. It was a little difficult. So I went into the web and looked up to see how often does Easter and unleavened bread overlap. And it turns out, it says, according to Loha.com, that Easter has overlapped Passover every year but three, 2005, 2008, and 2016. Now, I added 2021 because there was a mismatch in the calendar last year, whereas they thought their Passover was going to bust our Feast of Unleavened Bread wide open, but the Jewish calendar was off by a month, so they actually missed it in the year 2021 as well. So that normally happens, and in the past we haven't really seen any big deal, but when you go a little bit further and you look, when does Easter fall on the high holy day of unleavened bread, meaning that high Sabbath day? When does Easter fall on that day? Well, according to TampaBay.com, the only times in the last century that this has occurred was 2012, 2015, and when this document was written in 2018. So according to them, out of the last hundred plus years, Easter has fell three times 
on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, this document is talking about Good Friday, but you have to remember the story. Their Good Friday was our Passover. That was the day when they executed the Messiah. And it was by sunset on Passover that they had to get him into the tomb because it was the High Holy Sabbath day. And he stayed in the tomb over the Sabbath day and then he rose again on the 16th day of the sacred month. Well, for them, they call it Good Friday because they would have executed him on a Friday and he would have stayed in the tomb on a Saturday and then he would have rose on a Sunday. So you see how these two kind of go together. But anyway, I came in and did some research on my own, looking at the website moonsighting.com to verify what they were saying. 2012, 2015, and 2018. Well, turns out, according to the verifications given on moonsighting.com, these are actually people who laid eyes on the moon. You see that the latest sighting of the new moon in March 2012 was a Friday. And you know how this works. If you sight the new moon on Friday evening that makes Saturday the new moon day and the Sabbath days will fall on Saturday. So actually 2012 unleavened bread and Easter did not coincide, but they did in 2015 because the new moon was sighted on a Saturday. And since it was the evening of a Saturday, then the new moon day and the Sabbath days, as well as the high holy day of unleavened bread would have fell on a Sunday and it would have coincided with Easter. And then in 2018, you see, according to moonsighting.com, the moon wasn't sighted until Sunday, which would have made Monday the Sabbath day. And so once again, they would have missed the mark and Easter and unleavened bread would have been on two separate days. So, Given what they offered and checking it for myself, we see that the only day in the last century that Easter and unleavened bread fell on the same day was 2015. So this should bring the question, what's the significance of 2015? Well, looking at this moon data or this pattern created by Ken Potter over there on his channel on YouTube, He's collected this data and put it in this table here. We see that 2014 was the start of that tetrad, which would have been a time people would have started regathering around the law. But in 2015, unleavened bread and Easter fell on the same day. So that was decision making day. You had those who would have been keeping the feast of Passover and unleavened bread. But then you would have had those who were keeping Easter all on the same day. Now, you look at the importance of that, looking at 2015 as the beginning. And like we said, the only time in this century when the two days coincided together up until now, well, it does it again in the year 2022. And you look here, according to this pattern, it seems like 2022 is a peak over this 14 year period. So when they created the Gregorian calendar, making sure Easter fell on the exact perfect day that they wanted it to, was they thinking about the year 2022? Sure looks that way to me. Jacob's trouble ending, people waking up in an unclean and unprotected state, getting ready to get regathered back to the kingdom or our father's temple. Many of them will find themselves down there at church doing Easter egg hunts and playing with Easter bunnies on that day instead of communing with our father and taking advantage of his required day, that high holy day. So all of this seems to be pointing a picture, you know, like we look back over here at Luke when he's doing the Olivet Discourse as well. It's talking about how the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Well, back in 2015, in Passover of 2015, I offered this little bit of my testimony. I was there in late winter in our church giving a class, the local church up the street. I was doing Bible study and the lesson for the day was on tabernacles. And I thought it was so perfect that we were talking about tabernacles that at the end of that lesson, I started to explain Passover and how it was coming up less than a month later. 
This was the first year that our father had put it on my heart that we was actually supposed to be doing the communion. And I actually went out and bought wine for the entire church so they could partake in that communion festival. Now, they ended up doing Easter and I ended up drinking the wine with my family alone. But my point is, is that that is when the trumpets started blowing back there in 2015. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's come over here to chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible, because I believe it's also pointing to the year 2015 and the year 2022. You see right there in verse 7 when it says, When those chosen by me find themselves reunited around my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken, and in the sky there will be signs. So here it's pointing to the Revelation 6 event, but notice how here it's saying that when those chosen by me find themselves reunited around the law. So based on all of this information, we understand that we started getting reunited around the law in 2015 when the decision was made whether you would keep Easter or Passover. And this has gone on over the course of seven years. Many people have started to keep Passover and unleavened bread during the course of this seven years. And then in the year 2022, the decision will be made once again. The difference is now Jacob's trouble is over. And we're actually ready to get gathered into the temple. So that's what the third testament is talking about when it says reunited around the law. We have been getting reunited over these past few years. And it seems to me to imply that the earth and the stars will shake sometime in the spring of the year 2022. Now, do I think it's Easter of the year 2022? I'm not really sure because this peak right here actually falls during second Passover of the year 2022. So it appears to me that the decision will be made on Easter or unleavened bread, depending on which one you choose, will be who you decide. Will you follow the pagan gods or will you follow the most high? Once that decision is made, then we reach this peak during second Passover. And I plan on doing another class to talk about second Passover. But some of the significant events that happened on second Passover was the fall of Jericho back there with Joshua, as well as the ark being closed back there with Noah. There's like seven very significant events in the Bible that happened on that date. But I'll save that for the other class. Let's go on. Now here in Matthew 24, when the Messiah is talking about these events, you see how he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. And like we said, the tribulation ended in January the 13th. So how soon is immediate? Then notice down there in verse 30, it says, then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and a son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But then notice in verse 31, it says, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So again, he's talking about this gathering. And based on what we're learning here, this gathering could take place Passover of the year 2022. So many of those guys who would be talking about the rapture, well, they should actually be talking about this date here, Passover of the year 2022. Now, I'm not there going to say that anybody's going to fly up in the air or nothing like that. But the spiritually dead could be raised as well. Like we see over in 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians. Well, the third testament of the Bible actually explains what those trumpets are. You see down in verse 97, it says, And that will be the hour when the sublimity of the conscious, the vibrating echo of a trumpet will be heard. Announcing from beyond that the kingdom of life and peace comes to the men of goodwill. So these trumpets are blowing from our conscience, blowing from within. This is what's driving us to these feast days and away from these pagan holidays. Well, that's what 1 Corinthians and 1 Thessalonians is talking about when he says that the trumpet shall sound by this archangel and we shall be gathered. And notice that it says that the dead in Christ shall rise. Well, we learn over here in the third testament of the Bible that is talking about the spiritually dead. It reminds me of a class I want to do talking about 
Mary Magdalene and her brother Lazarus. So I think that was an example of what we have coming in the end times where the spiritually dead Lazarus is going to be raised and the Jezebel spirit, which was in Mary Magdalene, is going to get cast out. But anyway, we'll say that for the other class, too. That reminds me, make sure you guys have that subscription button pushed and that bell notification button pushed if you want to see these classes when they come out. In the meantime, you guys tell me what you think about all of this in the comment section. Some of this is new revelations and new information. It's like the Bible is coming to life these days. We're discovering scriptures that have been there the whole time that we never really recognized before. So, you guys tell me what you think. We'll definitely be revisiting these subjects before we get to the spring of this year. It'll be good to have your input included. So, I'll see you in the comment section. Look up sir now I'm Switzerland They was calling my line Turn up with us I was in the scripture then Waste your time I don't play with mine Must have never read Amos 9 Think he gonna let him kill us all I who else gonna teach the laws In time ambition It's 11.59 Looking like the world's in it Should this be the end of time I just pray that I'm forgetting When I stand before the judge Pray throw out the case This walk is all about repentance In time ambition It's 11.59 Looking like the world's in it. Could this be the end of time? I just pray that I'm forgiven. I hope that you make a decision. This walk is all about repentance.